Hey everyone, Dr. O'Neill here. In this video, I'm going to help you understand the muscle terms that describe the actions or movements of muscles. Let's jump right in. First, we have the flexors and the extensors. So when you think flexor, think flexing. When you flex a muscle, you're generally going to be bending a joint. So flexion is the bending of a joint. So flexors cause bending of joints, whereas extensors are generally going to be straightening a joint. So when I think of flexors, I think of the flexor carpi ulnaris, which is going to flex the wrist, flexor carpi, carpus meaning wrist, on the ulnar or pinky finger side of the forearm. When I think of extensors, I think of extensor carpi radialis longus. So extensor carpi is going to extend the wrist on the radial or thumb side of the forearm, and longus tells us it's the longer of the two muscles that do this which means there's also an extensor carpi radialis brevis. So those are your flexors and your extensors. Next, we have the abductors and the adductors. So when you think abduction, think taking away, like when a child is abducted. When you think adductors or adduction, think adding or bringing something back. So abductors take a structure away from the midline, Adductors bring a structure back to the midline. When I think of abductors, the first muscle that comes to mind is a fun little one, the abductor digiti minimi. So your digits are your fingers and toes. Minimi means smallest. So the abductor digiti minimi abducts your pinky finger, actually takes your pinky finger away from the midline. Abductor digiti minimi. Now, when I think of adductors, I think of your groin muscles, the hip adductors. The two biggest ones being adductor magnus, like the name implies, greatest or largest adductor, and the adductor longus, the longest hip adductor. So those are your abductors and your adductors. Next, pronators and supinators. So pronation and supination are, are movements that occur at the forearm. When you supinate your forearms, you're actually bringing your hands back to the anatomical position. Think forming a bowl of soup with your hands. Pronators are actually going to pronate the forearm, which takes your hands and puts the palms facing down. I think of your pronators as your drinking muscles. If you grab a drink and take a drink of it, you're doing pronation. As you put that beverage back down, you're supinating. So pronator, think drinking. Supinator, think bowl of soup. So the pronator muscles, you have the pronator teres and the pronator quadratus. They're both forearm muscles and their job is to pronate. Then you have the supinator muscle that, like the name implies, supinates the forearm. Next, we have the levators and the depressors. So levator, think elevator. They elevate or bring things up. They bring things superiorly. The levator scapulae which elevates the scapula, as the name implies, is a perfect example. Depressors, they're not just boring buzz kills at parties. They bring things down. They depress things. Key example here, depressor anguli oris. So it depresses or brings down the angle, angular, of the mouth, oris. So these muscles play a major role, I hope we don't use them often, in frowning. So those are your levators and your depressors. Lastly, we have the tensors. So like the name implies, they generate tension. They create tension. The best example I can think of here is the tensor tympani muscle. So tympani should make you think of the tympanic membrane, which is your eardrum. So this is a small muscle that increases the tension on the malleus, incus, and stapes, or the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Those are your auditory ossicles, the bones of your middle ear. So when a loud sound is coming into your ear, the tensor tympani muscle will actually tense up those bones to decrease the vibrations they create to minimize sound production and protect your hearing. 
So that's the tensor tympani muscle, an example of a tensor. All right, I hope this video was extremely helpful. Have a wonderful day. Learning complex topics is hard. That's why they're called complex topics. But I hope this video showed you that I can help you, that I can lead you down the right path, that we can tackle this topic together, one video at a time, one step at a time, one synapse at a time, until you grow gray matter.